Welcome to the premiere episode of Anabolic Review. I'm Dave Palumbo, and I'm joined by Dave Crossland all the way in the UK. And the topic of today's episode is the evils of trenbolone. That's right, the drug trenbolone acetate, trenbolone enanthate, known as Parabolin, Finijet, and a million other things over the years. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about this drug. Dave, welcome uh, back to the show. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. Good. You're, you're a little low. Maybe we can bring up your volume a little bit here. But uh, we had you on for a little uh, episode on uh, your life and what's been going on and your, your quest for the, uh, to break the 400-pound barrier. And we got some interesting insights. And I found out a lot about you that you, you know, you're, very, you're a student of uh, anabolic steroids, and as am I. So I figured we would pick a different topic or a different steroid to talk about each show so that we can give people more insights into how they work and, and what the best way to run them is and, and what the dangers <coughs> are and what the advantages are. And one of my favorites, at least, over the years was, was the drug Trembolone. Now, earlier in my career, there was no Trembolone uh, acetate or, or the fast-acting Trembolone or Finijet, as they used to call it. There was only the longer-acting uh, Trembolone known as Parabolone that we got from France. Uh, I probably used that the first half of my career. And then, then in the early 2000s, Trenbolone acetate became more available. Uh, people were, were making it from Finijet uh, pellets that they used to put into the cows to make them you know, grow in size. And, uh, and, and the whole world of bodybuilding changed for me because uh, Trenbolone is, is, is a very interesting compound. It's a 19 nor testosterone derived from the, uh, from the, uh, the 19 nor compound. What has been your experience, number one, with Trenbolone? And, and what do you like and dislike about it? There's no no denying it's a very powerful, powerful, powerful drug. Um, obviously, it doesn't aromatize. Uh, it has some very mild fat burning properties as well. Um, so it, it it works. You know, it, it's out of the arsenal of drugs that we have available. It is definitely one of the more powerful ones. And some of its derivatives, like methyltren, are insanely strong. But like anything in this life, if something's got a lot of bang for buck, it's going to have a price to pay. And, I mean, the side effects alone are probably harsher with trend than any other drug we take. You know, night sweats is a common one. Um, trend cough is very common. Uh, but also people complain about a coldness, uh, a distance, withdrawing, where they don't feel emotionally attached to anything. Uh, I've heard people sort of come out with comments along the lines, you know, my, my mother could die and I wouldn't really care. That's how withdrawn they felt. Uh, very vivid dreams to the point where they're actually disturbing the person that's having the dreams and it's making them feel uncomfortable. Um, and then we've, in recent times, we've discovered that uh, there is some certain effects on brain chemistry happening with Trembolone. Now, a lot of these studies are in their infancy and are far from conclusive, but when you take a drug that has that effect on you side effects wise, you've got to think that this thing's doing something with your brain chemistry. Anxiety is another big one. A lot of people report really severe anxiety attacks while using trend. And it's what stops a lot of people from using trend because they literally cannot cope with the panic attacks that it gives them. Yeah. You know, I, I my personal experience, first of all, Trembolone is, is four times more androgenic than testosterone, which is amazing as it may seem. It's true. You know, we think of testosterone as yeah. number one on an androgen scale, number one on the anabolic or muscle building scale. Trenbolone is four times more androgenic than testosterone. That's a huge testosterone. amount. Not yeah, only testosterone's... that. Testosterone's. Yeah, go. Sorry, go on. You go, Dave. Okay. Not only that, it, it, it doesn't really aromatize much because it's a 19 nor testosterone no. compound. Now, if you take an enormous amount of it, it, it can aromatize. But. So it seems on paper like the ideal anabolic. The problem, like you mentioned, is that when you increase androgen levels that greatly in the body, it has repercussions. It raises blood pressure, okay, which is why people say that Trembolone is kidney toxic. It's not really toxic to the kidneys. When you raise blood pressure, that damages the kidneys. So that's number one. Number two, you, like you said, it makes, you, it makes it very hard to fall asleep. Once I would fall asleep on Trembolone, I'd be fine. But I found myself taking like a Valium or Xanax close to a competition because I really just couldn't fall asleep. I couldn't turn my brain off. Uh, also, it, it makes you very angry. 
Uh, now, people who have anger issues to begin with should never take Trempolone. I'm the most easygoing guy, and when I would take it, I would be snapping left and right, and I didn't understand why it was doing that. Um, it does make you sweat a lot more. Whenever I'd be on an airplane, I'd be sweltering if I was on Trembolone. I, I could not cool myself down. I had to do the old Greg Kovacs trick. I had to bring the old uh, battery-operated fan and put it on my seat in front of me so it would blow on me to keep myself cool. Uh, so that, that's another, another issue that people have to accept. The problem is that it makes your physique look really, really good because androgen levels uh, increase the uh, storage of, of glycogen tremendously. So, you know, yep. if you are taking this uh, Trembolone compound in, in adequate dosages, which I feel is about 50 milligrams every other day is usually sufficient, um, you're going to see tremendous glycogen storage and the muscles look really, really hard. And because you're so aggressive, your strength goes through the roof on this stuff. So once again, on paper, it looks like the ideal anabolic, but there's a lot of side effects that go along with it. And, and one of the best ways of identifying whether your Trembolone is real Trembolone is if you take a shot of it, and it doesn't always happen every time, a lot of times you'll get a cough where you almost feel like you can't get oxygen into your lungs because you're coughing there's, there's out some, something. There's, and there's that, some sort of vascular contraction within the lungs when you take it, but I'm not quite sure of the full mechanism. You think that it? I always, my always, my theory, Dave, was that it, it you possibly might be exhaling some kind of preservative that's in the Trembolone, and because you're exhaling this, you you can't inhale oxygen, so it it makes it incompatible. I don't know if that's the case or not because it was like a dry, heavy cough, like you just can't get well, air in. Only from comparative, but um, you ever run PGF-2A? Yeah, I hated it. I felt terrible. I felt like I had the flu. Yeah. So. That, did you feel that, the lung constriction you get from PGF-2A post-injection? No, I just felt like terrible on PGF-2. I just felt like I, right. I wanted to like die on it. The Trembolone generally, is, just, is just, a, a, just generally, a cough. It's like a non-productive cough. Yeah, well, generally, when you take PGF-2A, you get the same cough. Oh, and do? the thing is, PGF-2A, it it's, uh, aspirates through the lungs. Now, when it does, it causes a, a constriction of the blood cells in the lungs. And I, I, the, 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 we don't, no one's ever come up with a, a proven reason as to why trend cough appears. But there's a few theories. And mine is that it causes this blood cell, this blood vessel restriction in the lungs, similar to PGF-2A. Um, which is why you get this dry, hacky cough, and you just can't, it's like a tickle, you just can't seem to clear it. Right, yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, like you were saying, test, you know, test antibody to antibody ratio is 100 to 100, Trembolone's 500 to 500. If you look at methyl trend, it's 30,000 to 12,000. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty Um cool. Which is why me for trends dosed in micrograms and not milligrams. <laughs> John, John Romano used to call Trembolone, he probably still does, the rela the relationship ender. Uh, because no one can Very stay in a relationship I mean, on it. There, there's a lot of people that will describe their, their sexual appetite as almost rape-like. <laughs> uh, and there seems to be a real disassociation with feelings for people that use Tren or use decent doses of Tren, yeah. where they just don't seem to care about things. They're not emotional. They seem to get very unemotional across the board. Right. I mean, you, would, you mentioned kidneys. There's been some recent case studies published of uh, kidney trauma. Now, what we're not talking about is kidney disease, but we're talking about damage to the kidneys that they are theorizing is a direct result of taking Trembolone. And in both three case studies that they've published, the user was using Trent, and there was no other indications or reason for the kidney to have an acute damage. Mm -hmm. um, there are rat studies showing, now I know animal studies don't always translate into humans, and it's a big leap of faith to say if it happens to a rat, it will happen to a human, but there are rat studies showing a direct action on the kidneys. Uh, I, I just, I don't know, but I do think it, it's worth bearing that in mind, that if you're going to be either a, a prolific trend user or you're going to be a high-dose trend user, that you do keep an eye on renal function just to make sure. Now, back in the day, in the 90s, when we used to use Parabone, Parabone came in a, uh, an ampule. Johnny just had it up on screen. It was a cc and a half, uh, and in that cc and a half, it was seven, uh, I think it was 76 milligrams of, of Tremblon. 
an athlete. 76 or 78, I can't remember, yeah. but yes, it was. I'm looking at the, the pamphlet right now, 76 milligrams. Yeah, so um, we would take one of those vials twice a week. And I'm telling you, I felt a crazy, crazy difference when I took those, those, those two vials a week. I grew better. Oh, good. I responded better. I got really hard. And I, it, I actually, I can remember the smell of it when I would, when, when I would draw it up. It, 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 it's like I, I, it's like in my subconsciousness almost. And I didn't get mm. as many side effects as I got when I, as when I took Trembolone acetate. Now, I don't know if it was a dosage-related thing or if it was just cleaner because the Parabone was pharmaceutical brand uh, and maybe the acetate version was just too fast-acting. I, I don't know what it is. Well, what's your theory on that? I think it'll be speed of delivery. Yeah. Um, you, we built, you know, we both know a body doesn't like change and it definitely doesn't like rapid change. Um, and I think it'll be speed of delivery. I, I think one, obviously acetate carries a, a higher percentage because the ester's lighter. So out of your hundred mig, you're getting more than you would be on the parabolin. Um, but I also think it's speed of delivery. I, I know a lot of people can't cope with trend ACE, but can cope with trend end. Um, just because it's, it's smoother in the way it's delivered and the way it leaves the body in the same time. So you're not getting this massive hormone spike and then drop off. Um, there's, there's a lot of stuff coming out now about, because obviously Tren is the highest binding affinity of all the drugs we take. Yeah. And that has definitely an impact on how efficient it is at building muscle mass. Um, it binds so well to, to the receptor, there's nothing going to squeeze its way in there. There's nothing going to disrupt that signaling. Um, but at the same time, it seems to have a more of an adverse, on, as, adverse effect on our brains for exactly the same reason. You know, I mean, we produce steroids in our brain, hmm. only in tiny amounts, but though those amounts and those levels are, are very influential in our mood and, and how we operate, especially with stuff like depression and anxiety. Uh, and there seems to be something in that high binding affinity where trend will affect brain chemistry more than the other drugs because it binds so well with the receptor. Hmm. What was some of the, give me a, an example that maybe you remember of the craziest thing you did while on Trembolone, like, like losing your cool wise. I wasn't too bad. Um, I've had to, mainly probably would have been driving related. Yeah, me too, me too. Um, where you, you've, you've seriously, and I mean, seriously, this isn't just a flash thought. This is a, right. If I get up alongside him, I can ram him into the ditch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have no patience in driving with when tremble on. Yeah, but uh, what I found strange is it, it's not just the fact that you're short tempered or you're grumpy. It's the fact that you are very calm in calculating how you're going to remove this person from your life. Right. <clears throat> where... You know, it's not like a, a rage where you're just ranting and raving and being. It's, it's, it, there's a cold calculation about it where it's like, right, I'm, I'm, this guy's pissed me off and I'm going to fuck him up beyond belief. So if I get alongside now, I can ram him into that signpost and he'll be fucked. Uh, and there's, there's that, there's almost a, there's, there's a, a very unnerving, um, calm calculation about how you're going to remove this person who's causing you a problem. Yeah. yeah. Where when I've had, anger issues with other drugs like check drops and stuff like that it's just been anger you know it's just been a, a frustrating sort of rage there's not been this cool cold undertone of calculating what i'm gonna do to get my revenge yeah yeah i i was very angry i i remember being very angry and i didn't really realize what was causing it because you're, you're in your own world then when i would go off the cycle you know after my show was over i would become this calm laid-back person and then i would realize you know what it had to be the Trembolone, and it, it, was, it was the weirdest, weirdest thing, and uh, that's why I tell people when you take this stuff, you have to be really careful, and you have to understand this stuff goes a long way. You don't have to use a lot of it. I, I, you know, I do tell people to take 100 milligrams every other day, some of my clients, but I, I really don't even think you need it. I think 50 milligrams every other day is more than enough. Maybe even three times a week is, is, is adequate. Um, I think less is better when you talk about Trembolone. I've, I've, yeah, I mean, I've, I've run it at high doses just to see, and I know plenty of people that are running it at five, six, seven, eight hundred mega week. 
Um, I think for me, the most disturbing thing was the the coldness, where particularly towards my family and my loved ones, mm-hmm. where I was I was cold, I was distant, and I I just didn't care. No. No. You know, you know, it, it was they were just there. There was no real emotional attachment. And that was really unnerving because it was like, why am I feeling like this? <laughs> you know, these are my kids. These are people I love. So why are they, why am I just so detached from them? Um, and that was quite, quite disturbing. But I mean, I did quite well with the sides. Um, what was the most you ever used? Cap- Dave, what was the most you ever used per week? 1.5 grams. Oh my God. Wow. You must have been a lunatic on that stuff. No, I wasn't. But then I never have been with gear. Gear's always chilled me out. It's never made me particularly aggressive. Diets make me aggressive. <laughs> you take me food off me, and I'm horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a mass murderer. You take me food off me. What? But um, <laughs> what? No, I, I mean, the main thing was the cold. I mean, I know people have said to me in the past, it must be shit gear. It can't have been right dosed if you were taking that much. I know plenty of people that were using the same lab, and it was fucking them up at three and four hundred mega a week. Yeah. What? But what, then I've what, always been drug resistant. I've always coped with sides very, very well. What brands out there do you think? Because I'm out of the loop because I haven't competed for over ten years. What what uh, brands on the market are, are, are do you feel are the best ones out there for uh, for Trembolone, real Trembolone? I'm a I'm out of the loop as well, to be honest. The um, ones that I've seen testing on of recent. Uh, Max Tech's come back quite good. Uh, Med Tech's come back reasonable, usually around the 85 to 90 percent mark. Arabian came, which is a really small lab, I believe. Um, that came back bang on the button, and the others tend to be a little bit hit and miss. Um, Baltic's good one month and then shit the next month. It just seems to vary a little bit. And I presume that's just down to the fact that raws and importation problems means they just don't have enough raw powder to, to do it as well as they want. Mm. Um, most of the labs in the UK these days are there, are there or thereabouts. Right. Uh, is, there any legitimate, with, is there any legitimate tremble on being made by a real laboratory, like, you know, like for, for medical no. use that you know of? No, no. They stopped making Parable, right? Yeah, they stopped making Parabola uh, a long time ago. Yeah. A very long time ago. Um, no, um, it was only around for a few years legitimately, and then they pulled it off the market shelf. They never said why. There was never a press release as to why it was pulled. But it's only been available as a veterinary medication since then. Yeah, I think I think they pulled Parabone because no one was legitimately using it for medical need. <laughs> it was only bodybuilders using it. And, uh, uh, I well, remember. Uh, I, I, would, I would have probably have expected that it would have something to do with some side effects that were being reported. Yeah, I remember going to uh, Andorra, uh, which is right between Spain and, and France, driving there from Barcelona, which was about an hour, an almost two hour drive, going into the pharmacy there with a wad of money and saying, I want Parabol. And, and, and when they saw the wad of American cash, they, they scrambled to the back rooms and uh, they brought out, I probably got about 100, maybe 100 vials of this stuff. And it was not cheap. They knew that, what, you know, that, that we were Americans, that we were, we were not using it for medical use. They didn't care in the pharmacy because it wasn't illegal there. And we bought 100, 150 bottles, I think, of the stuff. And it was like about nine, eight or nine bucks a, a vial back then. So it was not cheap. But, I mean, that was, I guess, decent price. for In the U.S., I think we were paying $20 a bottle for the stuff. So... Uh, we got some really nice stuff, and it was great to go into a pharmacy and actually buy real steroids. It was a real, you know, I was in my early 20s. It was the greatest thrill of my life. But, uh, you know, I haven't, it doesn't, it doesn't exist anymore in, in pharmaceutical form. So you have to kind of trust. The good thing about Tremblone is you can really tell you're on it right away because of all the side effects. Plus, it has a very distinct color to it. It has like that rusty, uh, orangish yeah. color. You notice that? It does. Yes, it does. Um, I mean, I've, unfortunately, I've never experienced anything but the UGL stuff. Um, one thing worth of note, actually, that's worth explaining to people while we're on this, if you ever test your estrogen levels on while you're on trend, they will be through the roof. 
Yeah, I agree. Because estrogen, because Trent has actually got an estrogen base in there, and as a result, for most, not all blood testing services, but for most blood testing services, it, it will show as estrogen, not as anything else. Oh, really? I didn't even know that. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I've had a few people in the past have come and, like, you know, their estrogen levels are six, seven, eight hundred, and they're like, what the hell's going on? I've got no symptoms. And then there's no, it's the trend. What that test is picking up is trend. And why is that again? So, yeah. It's because it's got an estrogen base in it. Mm-hmm. It's a heavily altered base, but it has an estrogen base in the chemical compound. So it doesn't. Um, have, and it, as a reason, it doesn't have any estrogenic qualities, though, does it? No, none at all. But when you when you test, that's picked up by the testing, and it will read as estrogen. Interesting. All right, that's good to know because I know you know I send a lot of guys for blood work, and if if we see those super high estrogen while on trend, we might know now why that's occurred yeah well dave uh, i appreciate you uh calling in we're going to try to do these every other week we'll pick a different steroid if people have any um suggestions or what they want us to talk about you can put it in the comments below if you like what we're doing like the video and of course subscribe to the rx muscle youtube channel uh for now we're out of time i'm dave palumbo with dave crossman for another episode of anabolic review